you see before you a big, fancy schmancy magical machine do hickey dickory duck. That looks promising. I can't put a finger on why Borderlands 3 never clicked with me, but outside of its excellent expansions, I never felt enamored with its world. It wasn't until my chance to play a few hours of Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, I think I unraveled my feelings toward the last numbered entry in the series. The stakes felt a little too high and were often at odds with the humor Borderlands is known for. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, on the other hand, is pure fantasy in more ways than one. Its story is completely self-contained, and so while I was playing through the quests offered during the four-hour preview, I never got the dissonance I felt from Borderlands 3. Instead, I felt exactly how I want to feel when I'm playing Borderlands, invested in the story so much as it helps guide my path to more loot and ridiculous enemy battles. I was really excited by the creative flexing the Gearbox team is able to do within the self-contained Wonderlands universe, and its ties to the Borderlands series give it that extra sense of familiarity without feeling stale. In other words, as far as Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is concerned, I'm pretty optimistic about the final product, even if I did run into a few Borderlands staples I'm less than fond of. Borderlands has always worn its RPG roots on its sleeve, so it's really awesome to see the Gearbox team go all in with Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. If you haven't been paying attention to our IGN first coverage, plug, here's a brief to help you orient yourself. Pandora's most popular tabletop RPG, Bunkers and Badasses, is back with everyone's favorite BM, that's Bunker Master, what did you think it meant, at the helm. Your fate maker, and you're tasked with stopping the evil dragon lord from doing his evil dragon lord things. The most recent preview dropped me right into the start of a quest to liberate a group of goblins from the oppressive shackles of their overseers inside of an ore mine. It sounds like it's pretty serious, but trust me, it's Borderlands distilled through a tiny Tina filter. It's silly and lighthearted and not super serious and dark. Right away, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands feels like Borderlands in Skyrim. I started off at the edge of a massive mountain ridge with gorgeous green grasses swaying in the breeze. Those grasslands quickly gave way to a craggy mountain range inhabited by element spewing wyverns and other fantastical creatures of the realm. I really liked how it at once feels familiar but also new. The best feeling parts of Borderlands environments, how they branch out to guide you on your path but also leave you just enough wiggle room to discover a chest or two hidden out of sight, well they're all here and they're just given a new fantasy facelift. I played through one part that gave me a distinct caustic caverns feel, which is one of my favorite areas from Borderlands 2, but it didn't feel derivative. It felt like its own thing while still giving me a little tickle in the old nostalgia glands. Aesthetically, Gearbox really knocked it out of the park with Wonderlands. I think it's the best looking Borderlands game to date. The environments really feel alive, and even the dankest, darkest caves have this vibrance about them. Audio design, too, is quite nice. I couldn't help but notice the sounds of birds chirping as I explored the overworld. Well, I heard them after I blasted my way through a few waves of bunkers and badasses, uh, badasses. But once they were all dead and the loot gathered, the subtle chirp of birds in the high mountain village was mm, music to my ears. In my time with Tiny Tina's Wonderland's extended preview, I freed the aforementioned goblins and I also had a run in with Claptrap, whose exterior appearance has been adapted to fit Tiny Tina's vision of what a robot would look like in a fantasy world. I definitely enjoyed making my way through the quests, but they do feel familiar. The classic Borderlands quest formula of move to point A, defeat baddies, smash or shoot or loot quest item, then move to point B and repeat until quest is over is in the preview I played. I'm happy to say the quests move along at a nice pace, but one of the things I found disagreeable about Borderlands 3 was how each part of the quest tended to get bogged down in expositional dialogue. What dialogue is here is funny and actually fits the concept of a tabletop RPG really well though. For example, your gaming companion Valentine wonders why don't they just steal the magical items they're tasked with retrieving, while another member of the party, Fret, reminds Valentine about how the heroes they're role-playing would actually act. This little conversation, which is over in less than a minute, it really helped nail the feeling of playing a game inside of a game. The mechanics of Wonderlands are solid. They're built on the tried and true Borderlands formula, and its pedigree is undeniable. While I do have my worries the quests might feel a little too arbitrarily broken up, the little touches from having Tina running a tabletop game makes it feel more substantial than it otherwise would without the double layer of a game inside of a game. Honestly, I'm really interested to see how the final game shapes up. For more on Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, 
Make sure to check out our IGN First coverage. And for everything else, keep it right here on IGN. There is a world beyond the Borderlands. A world forged by wonder and ruled by fate. There's one alone who can wield fate. One alone whose story is in their own hands. The Fate Maker. That's you. Heavy, right? <laughs>